Tornado Alley is a lie. Maps like these, shown all too often in any media pertaining to tornadoes, have failed to show the true story of tornado hotspots in the United States, misleading many with potentially dangerous consequences. To unpack this, there's an initial question that needs to be asked. What is Tornado Alley? It is most simply defined as the region of the United States that sees more tornadoes than anywhere else in the world, stretching from Texas up through South Dakota. However, beyond a surface level search reveals that in fact there really is no concrete definition to what Tornado Alley is. Different sources have their own outline of the region, that in some cases, vary wildly. As it exists today, the alley is more of a definition of personal perception rather than scientific data. Why this is the case requires looking back to the early days of tornado meteorology. The origin of the Tornado Alley concept traces back to the name of a study conducted by Air Force meteorologists Major Ernest Fawbush and Captain Robert Miller in 1952. In 1948, they implemented the first ever operational tornado forecasts for Tinker Air Force Base, miraculously predicting two tornadoes that impacted the base five days apart, thanks to the analysis of conditions preceding previous tornado events in the area. This 1952 study looked into severe weather activity across an area extending from Lubbock, Texas up through southern Nebraska. The term seemingly stuck along with the loosely defined boundaries of the original study. It was soon applied in outside contexts, starting in military aviator circles, then congressional hearings, and finally opened to a wider audience with publications like Popular Science writing an article about the alley in 1958. This loose definition of Tornado Alley seemed to work. At the time, tornadoes were most frequently reported in the Great Plains thanks to the miles of unobstructed views. As mesoscale meteorology matured, events like the 1965 Palm Sunday and 1971 Delta tornado outbreaks were some of the first large-scale tornado events documented in depth, both of which occurred well outside of the now widely accepted tornado alley. After the Delta outbreak, a new term entered the fold thanks to Severe Storms Forecast Center Director Alan Pearson. Dixie Alley. Stretching from Louisiana over into western Georgia, this newly defined alley would become infamous for some of the most impactful tornado outbreaks in recorded meteorological history. April 3, 1974 would see the legendary Super Outbreak, which was once again far removed from the original Tornado Alley, but instead devastating the eastern Midwest and heart of Dixie Alley. In the wake of the super outbreak, tornado expert Tetsuya Fujita authored a paper that explored a long-term fluctuation of tornado activities. Using metrics like tornado path length distributions showed that the centroid of tornado impacts was not biased towards Tornado Alley, but rather centered between the plains, southeast, and midwest. While this study was not looking at the definition of Tornado Alley, it was the first research piece that indirectly started to dispel the idea of its existence. Trend conclusions could not be drawn from this study because archival tornado data was rather limited, sporadic, and unstandardized at this point in time. The term and generalized definition of Tornado Alley was already cemented into the greater American ethos, so it remained contoured over the Great Plains. Flash forward to the 21st century, where the broad Tornado Alley definition has persisted and been ingrained for generations of meteorologists. Post-tornado event surveys have now been a standard part of the National Weather Service's role for decades now, with historic events retroactively cataloged to create a much stronger database for climatological tornado research. Tornado Alley's boundaries, which had been something that was more or less taken for granted, became the focus of some climatological tornado studies. As studies were conducted, a new narrative entered the fold in severe weather meteorology. Tornado Alley was shifting east. Firstly, nearly all tornado metrics, including the number of tornadoes, have seen a shift eastward within the past three decades compared to the three before it. Secondly, there has also been a near 100% increase in cold season activity within the more recent three decades and heavily biased over the southeast compared to the prior three. While the data sets aren't perfect, different filtering techniques and metrics analyzed across the board are painting the same picture. The tornado alley we've come to know and accept is not truly representative of the United States tornado picture in the 21st century. As mentioned earlier, this is not new information as this has been a subject of research now for the past 20 years. So why does Tornado Alley's acceptance persist? 
There hasn't been any peer-reviewed research into this question, but I have a few logical theories. The climatological peak for tornadoes is the end of April through mid-June. The Great Plains sees its vast majority of its activity during this time frame, including many of their impactful historical outbreaks and individual tornado events. Throughout the rest of the year, the Plains and by extension traditional Tornado Alley is rather quiet. It's outside of peak season where the southeast makes up for lost ground. The concentrated nature of year-over-year -year activity in the plains has likely allowed it to maintain its title of being the nation's tornado alley, even though the zoomed out picture has yielded a different story. Additionally, tornado media has been heavily biased towards the Great Plains up until very recently. The wide, unobstructed views and photogenic nature of storms on the plains have made them the home of quality tornado media and scientific field studies. It has not been until relatively recently where more media of tornadoes in places like the southeast has increased thanks to an abundance of smartphone cameras, storm chasing, and field study expansions beyond the plains. With all that has been reviewed so far, the final question begs to be asked. Why does it matter if Tornado Alley is shifting or its definition is wrong? For professionals and hobbyists alike in weather, we've all been aware in some capacity that Tornado Alley is not what it seems. However, this hasn't translated to the greater public, where tornadoes are not in their daily thoughts, with specifics and nuances in their wealth of knowledge. Misconceptions about tornadoes are all too commonplace, with one of the most prevalent including what regions of the country they can strike. While there are obviously places that see the alignment of tornado ingredients relatively regularly, just about anywhere in the United States and even the world could see a tornado with the correct alignment of ingredients. The general acceptance of the existence of a tornado alley can provide a false sense of security. Oftentimes in areas outside of the alley, victims of tornadoes state that they did not believe a tornado could happen where they lived. A false sense of security leads to a lack of preparation or plan to act upon when Mother Nature strikes, leading to the unfortunate increased likelihood of serious injury or even death. Using the data and research available, what should a 21st century approach to defining America's tornado hotspots look like? There are a number of metrics that could be used. Ultimately, across most research, the heat maps generated outline a similar area. Using the past 30 years of tornado data to generate a soft boundary, a modern tornado alley would look much less like an alley, but rather a large blob centered over the Mississippi River, with a bias towards the southeastern United States. Interestingly, with similar scaling applied to the 30 years before this more recent period, data suggests that the accepted Tornado Alley definition wasn't even super accurate to begin with. Nevertheless, the eastern shift between the two is undeniable. As for what is causing an eastern shift, cannot be said with any certainty. A significant increase in cold season activity in the southeast is contributing, but it is not the only driver. Long-term climate models point to an increase in atmospheric instability over the eastern half of the U.S., but given reliable tornado data only exists for the past 70 years, it cannot be reliably used for substantial long-term tornado climate research. For now, the main message to drive home is that tornadoes are not at all limited to Tornado Alley. In fact, much of the eastern United States can see fairly regular tornado activity, particularly in the southeast, where impacts will be felt the most frequent and with greatest consequence. No matter where you live, Tornado Alley or not, it is always important to be prepared for severe weather.